I have a problem. I was up until 2 a.m. last night looking at chunky sweaters on the internet. I basically dove straight into a rabbit hole of how to crochet on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, basically I figured why not take you on this neurotic journey of me trying to figure out how to DIY this chunky sweater. Side note, I've never done this before. I am a complete beginner and forgot the concept of yarn even existed until now. So we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm about to take you to Michael's. <laughs> Let's go. As I rush to my local craft store on my lunch break, let's talk about yarn. When I was researching, I didn't realize how many different types of yarn there is. From my understanding, if you wanna look like you're constantly wrapped in a chunky blanket, you wanna work with roving, which is different from regular string because it's a bundle of fibers that don't have a lot of structure. It's what gives it that fluffy, chunky vibe. However, it's not without some downsides, which I'll show you later. The cardigan I'm referencing uses merino wool, for their sweaters, which seems to be pretty premium in the yarn world. Also, I'm gonna be using the words sweater and cardigan interchangeably, so I apologize in advance. Anyway, the price point for merino wool was a bit much for me, considering I've never done anything like this before, and it's not as accessible, and I didn't want to wait for it to ship, because it's my money, and I want it now. It's my money and I need it now! So I was perusing the Michaels website and found this chunky, grande, big yarn by Loops and Threads. It's 100% acrylic and I'm guessing it's just a cheaper alternative to wool roving. It was also on sale for buy one, get one half off, so I was like, done. Sold. I made it to the store with my adrenaline through the roof because I only had 10 minutes to make a decision before going back to my apartment for my next work meeting. Could I have waited until tomorrow? Maybe. But what's an adventure without an unnecessary ticking clock? All right, so I came with a pretty specific color scheme in mind. What I imagined was a sweater with off-white chunks balanced with dusty blue chunks with forest green accents. However, they don't have any of the colors that I want. So I might have to make some compromises. Oh, and I'm also running out of time. So I panicked, made hasty decisions, and drove back home in cold sweats, and made it to my meeting with three minutes to spare. <gasps> oh my god, was it worth it? I don't know. So here's what I picked up, and what I actually ended up using were the two chunky white yarns and the two chunky dusty pastel twisty yarns. I know I have like a giant crochet thing in there, but you only need yarn in your hands for this project. And if you don't have hands, um, Oh, I'm sorry? With the buy one, get one half off discount, the materials cost me around $30, which is great considering the original costs about $200. So when it comes to making the thing itself, I wanted a simple pattern that didn't require a lot of thinking. So after a tiny bit of research, I found out you could just start off with a rectangle for the back, two smaller rectangles for the front panels, and then the sleeves, which I had no idea how I was gonna achieve, but figured it was future me's problem. And again, you can make this entire thing with just yarn. You start off with a slip knot and create a loop. Grab the string through the loop to start your chain. When you get the desired length, add another loop. Then go back to the chain behind it, poke your fingers through the top and create another loop. Continue down the rest of the chain and keep going until you achieve your desired length. When switching colors, you're basically doing the exact same motions. But just make sure you keep a long enough tail so your work doesn't come undone. Just think of that sweater song by Weezer. Again, keep going until you reach your desired length. I was worried about this twisty yarn, TBH. It's naturally a little bit thicker than the white, but honestly, it didn't cause me too much grief and I actually really like the fullness it gives. When you're ready to finish off the rectangle, add an extra loop to the top, go to the loop before it, create an additional loop and put it through the first loop. Now you've made a corner. Continue this motion through to the end of your rectangle. To finish it off, cut the string, pull it through the last loop and tighten it. I hit the tails by shoving them through the perimeter of the rectangle. I was pretty random with it. It definitely could be neater, but honestly, I think the beauty with these chunky sweaters is that it's supposed to look sort of messy. Like I just came out of a giant vat of yarn. I think this might be a bit too big. 
like width wise so i think i might have to redo it but it didn't take me as long as i thought it would so not i don't mind I'm, i actually think i might finish this today so yeah maybe it'd be a better idea to get measurements of yourself beforehand but here is a smaller version it honestly took me less than 30 minutes to redo this i decided to go with 14 loops for the width which ended up being about 17 inches and 16 rows up for the height which ended up being around 15 inches again i wasn't very perfect with it you can try to be more perfect with it but I didn't really care, so moving on. Next, I went to work on making the two smaller rectangles for the front portion of the cardigan. The basic principles are exactly the same as the larger rectangle for the back. I went seven chains across and 16 or 17 rows up. I honestly wasn't counting, which is bad, but I just kept comparing it to the back piece to see how far up I should go. I decided to go all white on one side and half and half on the other. The mismatched feel reminds me of that Harry Styles sweater that went super viral a few months ago. The sleeves are the hardest part of this entire thing, especially because I specifically wanted the lantern sleeve look where it poofs out for the ultimate chunky vibe. First, start off with a chain of seven. Connect both ends to create a circle by threading through the tail to the bottom of the last chain. Go ahead and start on the next row and continue spiraling along for about three to four rows. When you wanna start creating that lantern effect, here's what you do. When you get to the end of a row, instead of continuing upward into your next row, add an extra loop beforehand. Now you've got eight loops instead of seven. Keep going through the loops per usual and every time you reach the end of the row, add an extra loop. If you keep doing that, you'll start seeing your sleeves get wider and wider. I think I kept going until I got to about 16-ish loops. Again, I wasn't really counting, oops. When you get to your desired sleeve width, stop adding extra loops to the end of each row and just continue upward until you have an additional three or so rows and finish off the top. Cut the string for the tail and shove it through the beginning of the last row and you're done. With the other sleeve, I switched colors halfway. It's exactly how you do it with the rectangles, but just make sure you have a long enough tail and continue into your new row. You'll eventually tuck in the extra straggler strands later. Now that you've got all the pieces, we've got to stitch them together. Now, I will warn you, this part is incredibly half-assed on my part and not calculated whatsoever. Line the back, sleeve, and front panel accordingly and thread a running stitch all the way down. This also somehow turned into twirling it around the edge. Honestly, as long as it sticks, it's doing the job. Make sure you have long enough tails on both ends so you can secure it by going back around the same edges for extra support. When attaching the top of the front panel to the top of the back piece, turn the entire thing inside out in order to stitch with ease. And now you've got one side down and you just gotta do the same with the other side and you're finished. And voila, we finally have our finished product. Y'all, I am so proud of this project. It's incredibly cozy and warm, and it's perfect now that it's finally back to 70-ish degrees out in LA, which I know isn't that cold, but you know what? I'll take it. I've already worn it out and about and have gotten a ton of compliments from my friends and even strangers too. I think it turned out so well, and it took me less than three hours to figure out and complete. If I were to do this again, it should definitely take less time. All right, so before we finish off this video, let me just tell you things I do differently. The problem with working with roving is that it lacks any structure since it's super fibery and loose. This actually ends up creating a ton of lint, like a lot. It was actually very frustrating trying to work with this because you'd end up with just piles of lint. Even with the finished product, you're leaving trails of lint everywhere you go. Also, just don't wear dark clothing because it'll look like you murdered a sheep and then afterward i found this video where some lovely ladies explain why you shouldn't knit with roving it's super informative i'll link it in the description basically this material isn't very durable or strong and so i'm assuming my sweater isn't going to last very long but honestly for the price and for the experiment it was worth a try even if it only lasts a season i'm very very happy with the outcome but as an alternative, I found this other yarn called Bernat Blanket Big that has the same chunky thickness as the one I used, but with much less lint. It's not as silky looking and it's also not really a dupe for merino wool, but this other yarn will probably make the sweater last a lot longer. Alrighty, so that 
was the video. I'm actually in the middle of editing this, so I just wanted to film this outro. If you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. I make videos every week. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of going with it. Just hop on this ride and we'll figure out this shit show together. And with that, I will see you next week. Bye.